Morstan, Blakeney, and in more recent years, stars such as Presbyt and Shakeside Road are all horses who've passed through the doors of this place. This is Kirtlington Stud in the heart of Oxfordshire. We've come here to speak to the owner, Chris Budget, and find out a little bit more about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Having raised two Derby winners and pin hooked a third, Sir Percy, Kirtlington has a history which its owner is rightly very proud of. So what better place to start than with a trip down memory lane? On the rails, Blakeney was responding to Ernie Johnson's whip. Coming clear of Shoemaker, Prince Regent and Moon Mountain to lead the way home first past the post. What a great effort, a truly magnificent win by a grand horse who well deserved the honour of the winner's enclosure. Right, Well, my dad started it all off, and he's famous for owning, breeding, and training two Derby winners. And uh, he's the only man in history to have done that. And I have to say, an awful legacy to leave a son who's got to try and live up to it. But uh, having said that, uh, we, he asked me if I'd get involved in the training, which I refused. And uh, he then asked me if I'd get involved in the breeding, which I thought actually would be quite interesting. So I travelled around the world, uh, got really quite involved in the breeding side. I found it fascinating. And then uh, we, we built this place. The, the original stud actually is about 250 yards away on the other side of the road. But, and so this is actually purpose built. Uh, exactly the same ground, everything else. And, and luckily, we've so far bred one world champion here. And we pin hooked one derby winner, as well as one or two other illustrious winners as well. So we've been quite lucky. The world champion being Harbinger. When did your involvement with, with him start? Well, we looked after the mares for, for Mr. Roy or Mrs. Oy actually, as happens, and um, they came and boarded with us. And I remember that his dam had had quite a small foal, and so we wanted to uh, put some size into it. So we chose Dan Silly, produced the most lovely foal, actually just what we ordered, if you like. And, um, and he just went on, and he was a lovely yearling, bought by John Warren, who's a great judge. And, uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. You know, coming, becoming world champion, even with the injuries that he sustained, I think is just remarkable. And he was a fantastic racehorse, that race at Ascot, one, one to remember and savour, really. And the pin-hooking side of the business got you Sir Percy? Sir Percy and Presvis, yeah, and one or two others. Uh, in those days, I was doing it with uh, Will Edmeads, who's an agent, who was a great friend of mine. And we used to go around like two sort of old fools together, really, and, and just enjoying enjoying it. But uh, Sir Percy really stood out to me, breeding-wise. A has Blakeney in the family, so I rather like that. And uh, but it was the last foal for sale, I think, on the last day of the foal sales from memory. But and nobody really was interested because he's by Mark of Esteem, and in those days, Mark of Esteem had a bad reputation. And so we managed to buy Sir Percy really quite cheaply. And um, then we actually had a real problem at the yearling sales because nobody liked Mark for steam. He was the cra he was a cracking horse, and and uh, eventually, um, having been through the ring unsold, Angie Sites came down and said, "Did we have a horse for Marcus Tregoning?" And um, and I said, "Yeah, we got this one here." Worst thing was that I said that I keep a quarter of him, and by the end of the sale, we had a really bad sale that year, and I used those dreadful words Gordon Brown used. Prudence has got the better of me. I'm going to have to not not keep a quarter share. Cost me a fortune, <laughs> but never mind. You know. But we're still. He was a lovely horse, and and uh, you know always was. And he was raised properly. You know, a, as a foal, and so it was an easy job for us really. And Presvis, we saw a lot of in in Dubai. He was a bit of a, a rogue. Did you see any of that? Do you know he was as quiet as a lamb here on the stud? It often happens because as you go round here, you'll see how quiet and and how isolated we are. And so you don't often see that character in, in, in the horses. Yeah, he had a bit of a reputation. And again, you have to look at uh, Luca Kamani, because most trainers would have got rid of him early on. Luca obviously saw something in him. And again, what a great racehorse, you know, and, and tough and everything else. And yeah, he was, he was actually, he was a lovely little horse here. Yeah. And another favourite from Dubai, Shakeside Road, was, was here. Yeah, when I was asked to look after some horses for rabid bloodstock, uh, from weanling to uh, when they went into training. And so we had Shakeside Road here. We had ten of them, actually, and he was, he was the biggest, the strongest of the bunch. Um, and I think probably the nicest of the bunch as well. 
you know, and did we have any idea that he'd go on to do what he did? No. And again, you know, he's a horse. What I love is horses that train on and, and everything else. And he is one that did that. But he was a, you know, as I say, big, strong, straightforward horse. And as again, history, isn't it? But it's such fun being involved with those horses. Chris also owns several horses in partnership, including the progressive three-time winner, Zach Mayo, and Squash, now part of the Broodmare Band after being listed placed when in training with Philip McBride. You do a number of different things here. You also race horses in partnership. What gives you the most satisfaction? Most satisfaction is uh, breeding mares that I bought with good blood that I buy quite cheaply and trying to make a success out of them. And, uh, you know, we're not necessarily aiming for the, the great heights sometimes you get there. But, you know, if I get a horse that I bought for very little money, we breed to a stallion I like, breeding works. And if that horse ends up being rated 100, I consider that really quite a success. And I enjoy that. You know, any fool can go off and buy a, a horse for an awful lot of money and hope it makes a lot of money. I, I, I'm too cautious for that, I'm afraid. So, yeah. Any of the foals here at the moment, the, the yearlings that you think, I mean, obviously some beautiful pedigrees, anything you think might go on and be a star? Or I guess it's a bit too early to tell. Of the ones that are actually standing behind me at the moment, uh, you have a Muharar out of Twilight Mistress, which is Twilight Sun's uh, half-brother. Cracking foal, really, really nice foal. I've seen a couple of Muharars, and, and they are, you know, they're, they're really what you want as a foal, solid, they, they're balanced, etc. And he personally, I mean, he'll go into training, so sadly I won't be able to sell him. But he, um, you know, he is a horse that I would be follow, I will follow with keen interest. Uh, we've got, what else have we got here? I've got a, a Knight of Thunder, uh, one of the Godolphin stallions, um, out of a mare called White Wedding, so out of a, out of a daughter of HotelGenie.com by Green Desert. I think he could have a great future as well. I've got a golden horn out of Starfella, who's in a, a different group actually, but uh, he, um, he is really well balanced as well. So we have some lovely pedigrees here. Starfella was a group two winner out of a Galileo mare. Um, and, uh, you know, so we, ha we have quite a lot of potential here. We also have a lot of quite cheap horses as well, in all fairness. But, and out of those cheap ones will come something that's very good. It happens year in, year out, you know. And luckily, I've put quite a few of those into training myself, so we have a bit of fun. Yeah, you should talk a bit about your successes on the racetrack, Squash being one of the more recent ones. Her squash recently, yeah. She, she was, uh, the, her dam was purchased uh, by Angie Sykes and went to Manton. And sadly, we knew she was very, very fast because we have the same blacksmiths, and so you hear all the inside stories. Uh, she sadly fractured a pelvis, and I was rung up by Angie asking if they were going to put the filly down did we want to salvage her? And so with the breeder, I, I agreed that we would, we'd give it a go. And uh, so we had squash, she was actually a second foal, but she was beaten a, a nose or a short head in the Bosra Sham. And um, a yard beyond the line, she was about two yards in front, you know, so it was right on the line and such a shame because that would have been such fun, you know, because um, we don't often breed two-year-old horses here in all fairness, you know, we're, we're better known for horses that will train, you know, three and onwards, and uh, maybe a little bit longer distance as well. And she went on to be second in the Nell Gwyn, so yeah, she did really well and she was fun. You know, we had Blue Maiden before that who we bred, a cheaper horse out of one of our old families by Medician that actually we couldn't sell, and she went on and, and won a couple of black type races. And, and that's what I really get a kick out of, actually. Obviously, if we have a group one winner that somebody else breeds, brilliant, but yeah. Squash's dam Super Midge is now also out in the paddocks, as is group one winner Ribbons, who is in foal to Dubawi and has a filly foal by Frankel. And in the future, you'll continue along the same lines, looking for the next star? Oh, yeah, very much so. I mean, the, the problem I've got is that I'm 60 years old, three, three children who aren't interested. But luckily, uh, you know, I've got a nephew who... Uh, so my dad started, I'm, I'm now doing this. My nephew, who absolutely worshipped his granddad, is now setting up his own stud farm on, the, on my dad's old farm, actually. And uh, so we're, we're now sort of 
he was going to carry on the family traditions. How long I keep going for, I haven't got a clue. But yeah, no, even if I give up doing the stud, I'll keep broodmares with my nephew. And so we'll keep it going without any doubt. Kirtlington may have a proud history, but it's raising stars of the future too. <laughs>